Hey folks, welcome back. So this time I'm going to cover the massive collection of cuboids that I accumulated recently. If you remember, in a, one of my Cheap and Cheerful series, I covered these two lovely little puzzles from Chi, the 2x2x3 two by two by Tower and the 3x3x2 three by three by Domino. And I was so enthusiastic and enjoyed solving these so much that I decided to dive headlong into a cuboid collection. So in typical style, I had no impulse control and I bought a whole bunch of stuff off my wish list at once. And I should also say there are at least, I think, two more cuboids waiting for me under the Christmas tree as well. So I'll cover those in a few weeks' time once I've got them in my hands. Um, but at the moment, I've got 11 cuboids to talk about, so that should keep us going for a while. Uh, initially, I was going to do sort of unboxing videos for each of these orders as they came in, because this is actually four different orders in front of you. But... Uh, I found it be more interesting to just kind of cover everything all at once and I could divide them up into categories by dimension and type and just give you one big recommendation video basically. My impressions of the puzzles, what I felt about the ones I've solved so far, and hopefully it'll help some of you out there who are thinking about getting into cuboids yourself. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to start with 2x2x two by two by ends, which are in the front here, then I'm going to talk about 3x3x three by three by ends, which are here, then I have some 4x4x four by four by ends and a 5x5 five by, five by N, and then two brick cuboids. So I'm going to go in that order, kind of from simplest to more complex in terms of solving strategies. Um, and it also kind of matches up reasonably well with price, although the, the bricks are actually not that expensive. But since they are more complex, I'll keep them to the end. So first off, I'm going to cover these two cubes at once because they're actually the same uh, this is a 2x2x4, two by two by and so is this, but this one is from Wit Eden, as you can see. This one is from the Rubik's brand. Uh, now, I initially thought about buying something from Rubik's a while ago because I realized I have this big collection of twisty puzzles, and not a single one was actually made by Rubik's, and I felt that, you know, at, if nothing else, for completion's sake, and as a kind of homage to Erno Rubik, I should have at least one Rubik's brand puzzle because they're the brand that started it all. Erno Rubik is the guy that got us to where we are today by putting that puzzle on the market. So I did some research and I found that the 2x2x4 two by two by was actually one of the better ones that the Rubik's brand releases. Um, and so when I started thinking about getting cuboids, I, I ordered one for myself. Um, but just before I remembered about that pledge to buy a real Rubik's puzzle... Um, I had already made an order with the Wheat Eden store, and I picked up this 2x2x4. Two by two by uh, but it was kind of interesting to make the comparison. So, first of all, you can see that the sizes are quite different. Um, the Wit Eden cube, cuboid, is substantially bigger than the Rubik's brand. Um, so it's, it's wider, it's taller, uh, it's got big chunky cubies on it, which I actually kind of like. I, I like big puzzles in general. Um, my hands are not huge, but slightly bigger than average, I would guess. So I'm not a big fan of, you know, some of the speed cubes, they keep shrinking the sizes of the 4x4s and stuff, and I actually prefer bigger ones. So I don't mind the big chunky size on this. And, you know, it's fun to have these big, you know, R2s and be flipping these giant layers around. Um, but therein lies the problem with this puzzle from Wit Eden, is that these turns, the, uh, the along the long axis, these are fine. They feel nice, satisfying, smooth. Um, and the, the top and bottom layers, 2x2 two two layers, uh, they feel nice and smooth as well. Finger trickable, all that good stuff. But the middle layer is super slow and crunchy. And it's a little bit worry worrying sort of when you turn that layer. It almost feels like the puzzle is bound up or, or something might break off or fly out at any second. Uh, so it, it's the one part of the puzzle that makes me a bit nervous when I'm handling it. Uh, the rest of it is is good. Now, I've solved this puzzle a bunch of times. Um, figured it out on the, f the first day and was proud of myself because, you know, as as you should, I've been approaching all these cuboids fresh. Um, I did, you know, get some help learning the 3x3x2 three three um, and the 2x2x3 two two initially, and I'm trying to use those bits of knowledge to fuel my exploration of all these puzzles without using any tutorials or anything. Um, so I solved it, felt felt good about it. Um, and did it a bunch more times. So it's certainly a playable puzzle, I can say that. Um, and, you know, the shape-shifting works just fine. Uh, again, when you turn through the middle, it's a bit chunky, but, you know, nothing disastrous, I would say. Um, 
So if you do get this, I, I think you won't regret it, at least not completely. But, you know, it's not speed solvable or, or anything like that, but but pretty functional. Um, it's It was a bit expensive as well. I think, I want to say I paid about $14, $15 for this. I'm not entirely sure, but something along those lines, which is not too bad, but it's slightly more expensive than the Rubik's brand. So let's, let's compare it to the Rubik's brand. Now this one, uh, the first thing you notice is that it's smaller, as I showed you, but also it doesn't have stickers. It has tiles, and I love this because sticker maintenance is possibly my least favorite thing about this hobby. I don't like it. I don't like stickering things very much. It can be therapeutic if it's not, you know, a super huge amount of stickers, but stickering things like the truncated Icosa dodecahedron, it took like four evenings of my life, um, and I, I don't really want to do that too much. <laughs> um, and these tiles, you know, they're going to be durable. They'll hang around forever and look basically the same. So, you know, it's just more practical. But you still get that appealing contrast between the, the black plastic body and the tiles in the same way that you do with stickers. So I really hope that more companies will explore the use of tiles, uh, which GE, of course, has also done with a number of recent puzzles, uh, because it would appease the people who love the look of sticker puzzles, but give the durability and practicality for those of us who like stickerless puzzles. It would be a nice compromise, I think. And particularly if, if you know, some puzzles allowed you to change out the tiles, you know, then we could do tile mods like we do sticker mods. That would be nice to see. Um, but anyway, so I, I really enjoy having tiles on this one. Um, but the real main benefit to this, first of all, the, the slight extra portability due to the smaller size is nice. Um, but the turning quality is better than the Wheat Eaton. That's the main thing. Um, the middle layers, they turn much more smoothly. There's none of that crunchiness, stickiness. Uh, you know, it's, it's much more playable in that sense. Um, I don't get that slightly stressful feeling of feeling that the internal mechanism has something bound up like I do on the Wit Eden. Um, so it, it's generally smoother. However, it does have the Rubik's brand property that, you know, if the layers are the tiniest bit misaligned, you really have to force through a turn. So you, you don't want to do corner cutting on this. Um, the pieces are so square, you know, there's nowhere for corner cutting to happen, really. Um, the layers along the shorter axis are, are pretty nice as well. I would say they're a little bit almost too smooth on the outer layers because they tend to turn a little bit when you don't want them to. And because you can't corner cut, you often have to adjust and, and then make your next turn. So that's a bit annoying. But that's a property of most of these puzzles, to be honest with you. Um, but on the whole, this is definitely a more appealing puzzle, I think, than the Wit Eden. Uh, I prefer the tiles. I prefer the smoother turning. So it's also slightly cheaper, at least from where I got my Wit Eden 2x2x4. So if you're in the market for a 2x2x4, I would recommend the Rubik's brand. I don't know that there are any other options, actually. Um, but of the two, have a look for this one. Uh, it really looks nice. The only thing that's, that's weird about it uh, is that it uses a different color scheme. So you can see that yellow is opposite green instead of orange. Orange still opposite red. Uh, or no, sorry, yellow should be opposite white. What am I talking about? But instead, white is opposite blue. So that's a bit weird, but you get used to it in a couple minutes. It's not a, not a big deal. Um, yeah, but it's it's a fun puzzle to solve as well. I've, I've done this a bunch of times, as I said, since I got it. Um, you know, you solve the middle 2x2 two two and then deal with the outer layers. So solving the middle 2x2 two two restores the shape, and you go from there. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's a nice quick solve and something you can do just when you've got a few minutes and... Uh, it's fun and, and variable due to the shape shifting. So, uh, highly recommended puzzle if you're getting into cuboids. All right, so that's my long-winded comparison of the two by two by fours. Now we'll look at the three by three by ends. These are all from Wit Eden. Um, now, several of these, in fact, I think at least these two here are available in stickerless plastic, which normally I would get because I prefer stickerless plastic for practicality, but. The stickerless plastic shades that they use in Wit Eden are just disgusting. I hate them. I hate everything about them. So I got black with stickers. Um, usually I don't care that much about aesthetics. I prefer stickerless no matter what because I want to solve puzzles, not look at them. But in this case, it was just too much even for me. I just found them really despicable color choices. <laughs> so, uh, and then I, you know, once I got a couple in, in black with stickers, then I wanted to keep them all looking with a similar aesthetic. So I've gotten all of these with black with stickers. Now, one of the puzzles waiting for me under the tree is a three by three by seven. So I'll show that off when the time comes. Um, but
But these puzzles turn all substantially better than the 2x2x two two So I'll say that up front. Uh, maybe because the 3x3 three three mechanism is so you know widely explored and optimized even by the smallest companies. Um, you know, it's really maybe it's easier to build a smooth 3x3 three three mechanism for, for some makers than a 2x2. Two two. I don't know, but they're, they're, they're all much better to, to handle. So um, if you're in the market for variations on the 3x3, three three, uh, I can definitely recommend these puzzles. Now, 3x3x4 three three is a great little puzzle. There's a little bit of catchiness, uh, particularly if you're trying to do slice turns and stuff. But it's nothing terrible, honestly. It's perfectly playable. There is actually a little bit of corner cutting, just a little bit. Even there, it still cuts. Now, of course, the 3x3x4 three by three by does not shape shift, right? Nothing happens if I do that. Um, so you're doing a lot of R2 moves. And basically, uh, you treat it as a kind of nested set of 3x3x2s three by three by during a solve. So you solve that 3x3x2, three by three by and then this one, making sure not to re-scramble the middle one when you're working on the outer one. So basically, never rotate the puzzle when you're solving the outer layers. So it's a quick solve, uh, pretty intuitive once you know what you're doing. Um, and this puzzle works really well. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, the price was was reasonable. I think it was about twelve or thirteen dollars. Um, and as you can see, very functional. Really finger trickable. The middle layers don't have that stickiness and crunchiness of the two by two by four. So not much to complain about, really. At the same time, in the same order, I also got this three by three by five. There we go. And this, again, is a, is a good quality puzzle. The turning is smooth. Uh, there is some catchiness. You can hear there's a little bit of clunkiness in that sound when you turn the outer two layers. Um, and there is more stickiness and slowness in these second layers uh, than the outer layers. But you know, given the, the weight of the pieces, there's probably more friction and stuff. So it's not super surprising. Um, and, and still it's less grindy than the 2x2x4, two by two by so pretty pretty decent, all things considered. Now the 3x3x5 three three does shapeshift when you turn 90 degrees. There we go. And the shapeshifting is fine. I, I don't find that it increases the catchiness or the unwieldiness of the puzzle. Um, the extensions are pretty solid. I was wondering if they might be a bit floppy. And there's a little bit of wiggle room there, but I think that's you know unavoidable. Um, but the puzzle feels really solid. Doesn't feel like anything's going to pop out. Doesn't feel like it's going to, you know, do anything crazy in the middle of a solve. Uh, you know, it, it inspires confidence when you're moving the puzzle. So, no problems there. And uh, yeah, overall, uh, I think this is a really nice puzzle. I, I actually ended up solving this one when I didn't intend to, <laughs> because I, I was excited to get these puzzles. I wanted to put some photos and stuff on Facebook for my family and friends, and I did sort of a mini scramble for each one just a few moves and, and like one shape shifting move so that it would look cool you know and then i found that i couldn't get the shape back on this one so i just threw my hands up in the air did a you know scramble it even more um and then decided to learn how to solve it and actually it was a bit of a marathon because uh i i didn't i didn't think it through properly basically i, I found out afterwards that i managed to solve it with my weird method but I had done it in like the most annoying possible way. <laughs> so what I had done was, um, it was all shape shifted and, and you know in a weird shape. And then I I brought it back by solving it like a three by three in to sort out the shape. Um, and then I proceeded to work on these two layers on the outside. Actually, normally what you do is like the three by three by four. You know you would solve an inner three by three by two, which in this case would be here. Um, and then you move outward, but I moved inwards for some reason. And what ended up happening was I had like this stuff solved and this stuff solved, and then edges flipped around the center. And I couldn't find any way to resolve it. So then I, I gave up, I looked online to see if, you know, was this a common situation? Couldn't find any parity algorithms that covered that case. And so I asked on the Twizy Puzzle forum, you know, am I, is my intuition right here? Do I need to do something unusual? And they confirmed that uh, I did need to do some shape shifting moves again, uh, go back to three by three by five moves um, to resolve that parity I'd created for myself. So I, I did. I was quite proud of myself. I managed to find a way to flip those edge pieces, and then it caused a parity on these layers, which I could then resolve. 
right? So I did solve it, but don't, don't do what I did. Solve it from the inside out. That's my recommendation. Um, but this is a really nice puzzle. I've since solved it again in, in the more normal way, instead of my absurd five times longer way that nobody does. Um, and, and it's standing up to scrutiny, the puzzle. I do enjoy solving it. So I, I can recommend this one. Just be sure the, that you get the right one because Wit Eden offers some eye cuboids. So in this one, you know, it's fully proportional and, uh, it's, it's made such that the axes here turn from the center of the overall puzzle, right? So the center of the three, the three by five is where you kind of intuitively expect it to be, which is here. And the extensions uh, to make the puzzle its current shape are sort of placed on both ends of the puzzle. But the eye cuboids, uh, they extend just in one direction from the original three by three shape. So you have the center up here. So when you turn the puzzle, imagine that it's turning around the center there. Um, so it'd be sticking out further in one direction. And that leads to different behavior, which you may want. And, and I think if you already have a regular 3 by 3 by 5 then the IQ Boyd style may be interesting to you. But uh, just be aware of what you're getting. If you go to the Wheat Eden store like I did to buy this, look for the 3 by 3 by 5 version 1, uh, V1. That's that's the uh, non IQ Boyd one, the, the standard centrosymmetric, as they refer to it, with some other puzzles. Um, so it took me a little bit of sort of looking around the different listings on their shop to find the right one. But I did get the one I wanted in the end. Just be aware of that. The same is the case for a lot of the larger dimension cuboids that they offer from Wit Eden. So the 3 by 3 by 6 has an eye cuboid version, the 2 by 2 by 5 stuff like that. So just double check before you, you know, make your payment that you're getting the right one that you want. Um, but yeah, nice quality puzzle, fun to solve. No complaints. Uh, finally, in the 3 by 3 by ends, we have the 3 by 3 by 6. Um, so this is again from Wit Eden, but but like the three by three by four, it's on their sixteen eighty eight cube imprint, which has the exact same logo. I don't know why they have this imprint. Really, it doesn't really make sense to me. But I'm not a business person, so I, I don't know what they're what they're doing. Presumably, there's a strategy behind it. Uh, but this again, uh, they they list this one uh, in most places as a three by three by six centrosymmetric. So that makes it easy for you to find the non i cuboid version. Um, look for centrosymmetric and you should be on the right path. So this, again, uh, does not shapeshift. It's essentially an extended version of the 3 by 3 by 4 so no shapeshifting there. And you deal with it as a set of three 3 by 3 by 2s this time. Uh, and this is a really nice solve, this one. The, the long axis turns feel good. No real problems there. You know, a lot of friction because of all the pieces and extensions and everything else, but nothing terrible. The layers turn pretty well. Again, there's a noticeable increase in, in smoothness as you move to the outside of the puzzle, but that's, again, not overly surprising. One complaint I have with this, and I found this in general with the Wit Edens, that there is quite a bit of catchiness because uh, particularly the, the corners of the pieces are quite rough, uh, and sometimes you have some additional flash from the injection molds uh, that hasn't been cleaned off and you get this catchiness. In particular, these layers here, these guys, I have a lot of that catching going on. It hasn't really annoyed me a huge amount, but it does slow you down when you're doing solves and it can sort of make you lose your place what you're doing because you have to pause and stop your algorithm, figure out how to get past the catchiness. And you can kind of hear that clicking noise that's actually me pushing past a, a bit where it catches on the corner here. And you get a lot of that. Um, so in, in general, the Wit Eden puzzles, despite the price not being that cheap, uh, they end up feeling quite cheap. The plastic is, is not great quality and you have these you know bits sticking out, causing catching and so on. Um, but as a puzzle solving experience, it's pretty good. Again, there's a catchiness there for you. Yep. Um, I, I've enjoyed solving this one as well. It's a little bit extended from the 3 by 3 by 4 in terms of the solving time, which I like. I like higher order puzzles in general, and uh, I found this one really enjoyable. I could just jump right in after confirming I could solve the 3 by 3 by 4 and uh, it didn't really add any new challenges, but it just, you know, I, I like that process of extending my technique to a larger puzzle and, you know, it introduces more opportunities for you to make mistakes. Um, you know, you can get cavalier and think you know what you're doing and then have to 
go back a step and stuff. So there's, there, I think there is a little bit of an extra challenge in higher order puzzles that we don't really acknowledge. Uh, it's true you don't need new algorithms or anything, but on a longer solve, there's more chances for you to screw up. So that does increase the difficulty a certain amount, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice puzzle as well. The three by three by ends in general, I can recommend. Again, I, I do wish that, you know, a speed cubing manufacturer would, would do some of these, you know, they, they clearly have the expertise to make, uh, you know, all kinds of three by three shape mods and stuff from Changshou and Chi E that turn incredibly well. So just, you know, start making some extensions, make some three by three by fives and fours and sixes, and uh, we'd all be very happy. Uh, and it'd be nice to have some competition for Wit Eden, so they have to step their game up a little bit. Um, you know, I feel like there's not a great deal of quality control happening. Um, we get this sort of subpar feeling on some of the puzzles with all the catching. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a good solve, and I, I do recommend it. All right, next up, we'll do the 4x4x four by four by ends here. Two of these are from a company called IE, and I got them from the HK Now store. And the HK Now store has a brand of puzzles called Calvin's Puzzle, which you can see the logo here. And I got their 4x4x6. Four by four by as far as I'm aware, uh, Calvin's Puzzle is the only brand that makes a fully proportional 4x4x6. Four by four by they also have a center shifted one, which again is the iCuboid style, so just be aware of that. But it's very clear on their website which one is which, so I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, the IE puzzles have been around for a long time. I've, I've saw videos on these when I was researching them on YouTube going back about, I want to say, nine or ten years. So they've been around for a while. But they seem to fluctuate in terms of being in stock. So when I saw the 4x4x3, 4x4x5, and 5x5x4 all in stock at the same time, I decided to grab them, and while I was there, to pick up the 4x4x6. Um, and I, I should note that these two, actually all the IE puzzles came unstickered. And the stickers came in a separate pack. Um, so I have stickered these myself. Uh, the sun, unbelievably, for Scotland is getting a bit bright. Okay, and we're back. Um, yeah, so I've stickered these puzzles, the 4x4 or 3 and 4x4 or 5. I did not sticker the 5x5x4, and I'll explain why not when I get to that one. Um, so I've solved the 4x4x3, and uh, I have to say I really like this puzzle. Um, again, it feels cheap, there's loads of catching, it's really overpriced, blah, blah, blah. But... <laughs> Uh, as a as a puzzle solving experience, it was a lot of fun. Um, I love the four by four. It's probably, you know, somebody said, "What's the one puzzle you can take to a desert island for the rest of your life?" It would be the four by four. I love the reduction process. I love the way it contains an entire three by three solve within it. I love that there are other ways to solve it that don't involve reduction. Um, I love speed solving it. I love regular solving it. I just I love everything about it. And so I was really excited for these four by four by ends. To kind of mix it up a little bit, and I was not disappointed by this one. Um, now, this one doesn't shape shift, as you can see. Nothing happens when you go 90 degrees, so you're doing a lot of R2s, and you have to really change your solving strategy up from 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Um, you can see some catchiness. Sometimes it just doesn't go, it just doesn't. There it goes. Um, and again, you know, corner cutting, not going to happen. But it's it's actually pretty smooth, other than that. So it's one of the better ones out of this collection that I've got so far. I will say that. Um, but anyway, the, the solving strategy is interesting and, and fun because basically, um, instead of sort of reducing it to a 3 by 3 by 3 you're reducing it to a 3 by 3 by 2 right? Which makes sense kind of intuitively, reducing the dimension by 1 in, in, in each case. Um, so what you need to do is, is uh, you start out by solving your top and bottom centers and then your side centers, and then you pair up uh, edges, resolve your middle layer, um, and then you can solve the top and bottom like a 3 by 3 by 2 um, And I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the point already where the techniques I picked up from the cuboids I know are clearly applicable to uh, new and different cuboids. And I can take those techniques that I picked up and, and recombine them for new puzzles and experiment and uh, it feels very satisfying. You know, it's it, it's not like I'm attacking a completely different puzzle. Um, there's a clear relationship to things that I understand. And I like that sense of progression, you know. So um, I've tried to go through these puzzles as I've gotten them in a, in a logical order. So from 2 by 2 by N to 3 by 3 by N and now 4 by 4 by N. And that seems to be working out well for me. Um, it, it, side note, you know, 
really, if you want to get into keyboards, you need to get yourself a Domino 3x3x2 because it's amazing how useful knowing how to solve this is for like every other keyboard. It's really essential. Um, so get yourself one of these first, master it, and then move, go from there. You'll be using that uh, that knowledge in like every other keyboard. Um, but yeah, I, I like this puzzle a lot. Um, it, like I said, it you know it's it's not great quality. It feels like it could fall apart at times because the plastic is light and cheap. Uh, some of the pieces are not capped, which introduces um, some catchiness and stuff. Um, and it's overpriced, frankly, but uh, it is it is fun to play with. So it's up to you whether it's worth the cost. If you really want to try 4x4xN, four by four by um, the IE puzzles are really your only option besides the Calvin's 4x4x6 four by four by and 4x4x5, four by five, um, which are also very expensive. So not a lot of luck on that front. But uh, I like this one. I also like the fact that it's kind of enormous. <laughs> So if you compare, this is the 4x4x5, which I would consider a more standard size for a 4x4 looking from this direction. And look, this thing is massive, which I, I like. I, I wish that they made the 4x4x5 with the same size cubies. That would be a lot of fun. Um, it just it feels very chunky and satisfying to turn uh, this somewhat oversized puzzle. But yeah, you can hear a little bit of catchiness going on. Things sort of clicking over each other. Uh, but yeah, I like this puzzle a lot as a as a solving experience. As an object that I paid money for, I'm not overly impressed, but I'm also not depressed. So, you know, we're in the happy medium, uh, basically. So that's 4x4x3 from IE's Toys. I think it says IE's Toy. There you go. Next up is the 4x4x5, also from IE. This one is, is also decent, but it's way catchier than the 4 x 4 by 3 There are also more pieces that are not capped, so you can see the corner there, for example. And that seems to always lead to catching when you have puzzles that, that don't have capped pieces. Um, just, you know, there's more opportunities for little bits to catch on other little bits. Um, and sometimes what happens with this one is it just won't turn until you push it a bit further. So, particularly with, with these R2s, you know, sometimes it just it just stops. Like, I don't know what's going on there. And it'll go when you push it a bit harder. But it's slightly, slightly worrying. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about. And again, reminds me of the feeling of the Wit Eden 2x2x4, where you kind of find yourself thinking, oh god, I hope it doesn't explode. Um, I don't think it's going to, but it, it does not inspire confidence. We'll say that. Um, there's also, you know, this catching on the outer layers with these very sharp corners to the pieces. But, you know, it's it's playable. Just. And when it does decide to keep moving and not randomly stop, it's pretty smooth. But then the corner cutting is unbelievably actually even worse than, say, the Rubik's brand or some of the others. Um, okay, just go. There we go. <laughs> so I, I can see that getting a bit frustrating uh, when I'm solving this thing to have these random stoppages like that. But if I just make my turns a little bit more forcefully, I think it won't be a huge problem. I'll just have to find a balance, make sure that I don't whip these things around so much that the puzzle falls apart, which, I, like I say, it feels like a distinct possibility. I, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope I'm wrong. But it's not the most solidly built puzzle in my collection by any means. Um, the size, as you can see, is more typical of a standard 4x4 that you would buy uh, for speed cubing or something like that with just the added layer here. Um, so it's comfortable in the hands. Very noisy. Um, the stickers for these two puzzles, I would say, are okay. Nothing special. I think they're a little bit better quality, maybe, than the Wit Eden ones, but I'm not 100% sure. They've got a kind of matte finish, which is nice. Um, the colors are, are easy to distinguish. I have not solved this one yet. Um, it's next on my list because I've done the 4x4x3. Four by four by my intuition is that, much like that puzzle, uh, there will be a reduction process here, but in this case... I would expect I'd want to reduce it to a 3 by 3 by 5 basically. So I imagine I'll do these centers, and then I'll do the edges on the top and the bottom. And then effectively what I would have... Well, if I make pairs of centers along the sides here, so that these are like a single piece, then I would have a 3 by 3 by 5 And then I, I know how to solve it from there. So I think that should work. Um, then as long as I don't do any slice turns like that, 
um, and just do outer layer turns, then it should behave just like a three by three by five without shape shifting. Um, so I think I think it should be uh, pretty straightforward for me to solve now that I have some techniques in my armory. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I think you know it, it turns okay-ish enough that uh, it should be okay to get through a solve. Um, but man, that stickiness is quite annoying. I have to say, it really does. Ugh. But you know, I've had worse. And in fact, you'll see one of those soon enough. Um, that's the 4x4x5. Four by four by it's, uh, you know, it's okay. But I think as a solving experience, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm trying to focus on the positives here. <laughs> Next up is the 4x4x6 four by four by from Calvin's. This puzzle costs way too much money. Really far too much. It was $38. That's too much. I'm sorry. Um, you know, that's more than like a world-class you know, top-of-the-line speed-solving 4x4, and there's no... There, this puzzle does not even approach that level of quality. It's miles away. Um, but I think, in general, the Calvin's puzzle stuff is way overpriced. I respect that, you know, it's a small business, and they don't have the manufacturing and so forth of, I don't know, the bigger players like Moyu or Chi or whatever. But still, I mean, that's a lot for one cube. Um, that doesn't even have that great quality to it. But as a puzzle, again, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So the 4x4x6, uh, I'm, I'm made to understand, is a pretty interesting and challenging solve. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, obviously, this one can shapeshift, unlike the 4x4x5, as you can see. So that's going to add to the challenge a fair amount. Um, I mean, I would guess that the way to attack this would be, as with the 3x3x5, to solve it like a 4x4 four four first to sort out the shape. And from there, that's an interesting one. I, I suppose I could treat reduce this to a 3x3x6, three by three by maybe? If I, again, were to solve the centers on the top and bottom, pair up like colored center pieces along the side, so those are like single center pieces, and uh, yeah, and then solve the whole thing like a 3x3x6, three by three by that, that might work. Um, or I could maybe solve the whole inner 4x4 four four, and then solve the top and bottom? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's many ways to do it, which is which is exciting. Um, I think this puzzle is going to be a bunch of fun, so I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm sticking to the plan. I'm going to do the 4x4x5 four four first, see how I get on with that, and then progress to this and try and put all my techniques together and see how I get on. I suspect this one might give me some trouble, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge of it. But while we're speaking about price... Uh, something that really annoys me about this puzzle is the stickers. They are terrible. Um, so first of all, you have this annoying line over like all of the faces. You can see it here as well, these X's. Um, I don't know why that's there, but it's ugly. The other thing is that the stickers out of the box were peeling already, and some of them are not able to stick properly. They're bits sticking up, and I can't seem to fix it. It's like they were not put on fully, and then the glue has dried out, and they won't go down any further. And there's no replacements in the box. So, just a triple threat of crappiness. Uh, it makes the puzzle look bad. It makes the puzzle look cheap. Uh, it doesn't inspire confidence when you want to dive into a solve. And the fact that there's no replacements means I can't even do anything about it unless I pay a bunch of money to all of our stickers and wait forever for them to ship. And it just really annoys me, to be honest with you. I, I don't think we should be... Uh, putting up with this kind of uh, behavior <laughs> from these companies. You know, the product, you know, it moves well. I'll give it that. Uh, it's much smoother than the IEs. I don't have a lot of catching going on here. You know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a smooth solve. I can tell you that. But, you know, if you're going to charge me $38 for a puzzle, I expect it to look better than this. I'm sorry, but I just do. You know, I can get a Blackwood sticker speed cube for, for less than that, that looks and functions a heck of a lot better than this. Um, you know, just take take the time to, whatever your sticking process is, just, you know, make it better. This isn't good enough, frankly. Anyway, um, regardless of all that, if I can put my complaints out of my mind, I think I will enjoy solving this puzzle very much. The turning quality is better than the others. It's still not great, really. Uh, very crunchy. I think it needs some, some tensioning, some lube. Um, still, you know, the quarter cutting is uh, suboptimal, but I'm going to be slow solving this anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have fun with it, but I'll be slightly annoyed the whole time.
<laughs> because it still costs too much money. Anyway, while we're complaining, oh, here we go. It's time for the 5x5x4, five by five by and just don't buy this. Guys, that's all I'm going to say. I haven't stickered it because it's the worst, and I hate it. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to send it back or try and fix it. Um, I really, really, really was looking forward to this. I love 5x5 five five almost as much as I love 4x4 four four cubes. And, you know, this would be my first 5x5 five by, five by N and the only mass-produced one that I'm aware of, and it was going to be a lot of fun. But it doesn't move. It does not move. Look at this. It's like it's like it was made out of stone, you know? The tensions are horrible. The The pieces are sharp. The quality is awful. There's bits sticking out everywhere that catch on all the other bits. And when you just turn it, you know, you try to make some moves. And the center caps actually work themselves free and fly off because there's so much friction. It's just everything about it is awful. And I paid, you know, something like $34 for this. Uh, and I'm genuinely angry about it. I mean, th this the puzzle does not turn. Do you see that? Um, this is unacceptable for a packaged product. It is not acceptable. Do not buy this, please. I've seen other videos where I don't know if they got a review sample and maybe it was, you know, done properly or something before it was sent to them. Uh, but my puzzle turns nothing like that. It is the worst. That is, this is the worst turning puzzle I have purchased out of. I must have 90, 100 puzzles by now. It's awful. Don't buy it. That's all I can say. I, probably it's fixable if I take it apart and figure out how to tension this stupid thing. And, you know, maybe lube it and maybe sand all this horrible flash mold off of it. But I shouldn't have to do any of that. I paid 30 plus dollars for this puzzle. It should be a product that I can open the box and use. End of story. Uh, but it, it sucks. It's the worst. <laughs> Don't, oh, I'm so disappointed. I'm even more disappointed with this than I was with the MF8 Master Void Pent Ultimate, which again, I was really looking forward to. And I've spent countless hours trying to lube it, trying to break it in, having it fall apart, no matter what the tension settings are on the screws. And I've basically given up at this point. Um, uh, but this, this was worse right out of the box. I mean, at least... The Master Void Pentultimate, I could get some turns to happen. It's just that they're so clunky. There's no way I can finish an algorithm. I just, I just forget where I am, and I have to start over. Um, this one, it, it barely moves. So that's that's just not acceptable to me. So if you're looking for a 5x5x4, five by five by uh, I'm sorry to say you should keep looking. This is not one that you should spend money on in any way, shape, or form. Um, if I do manage to fix it, I will report back... Um, I'm not super hopeful. It's just, you know, every aspect of its quality feels poor. Um, you know, yeah, don't buy this. Sorry to say that, but no other way to express it. Finally, we end on a brighter note. So these two puzzles are the bricks from MF8. We have a 2x3x4 and a 3x4x5. And I was looking forward to both of these because I heard they actually turn well. And fortunately, I was not lied to. Um, the 2x3x4, it's a little guy here. You can see it's nice and smooth. Look at that. And it doesn't make lots of horrible grinding noises. And I can turn it with a minimum of force. A little bit, tiny bit of catching on this outer layer, but nothing that's frustrating at all. I can finger trick everything. It's a proper puzzle. Look at that. It works. And it was cheap. This cost like, what, $8 from Z-Cube? Uh, you know, this is a no-brainer. Buy this puzzle. Um, just be aware that they did make a first version of this that had some kind of internal bandage mechanism, and it basically didn't function like a proper 2x3x4. They then released a patch kit for that, which you could buy separately, or and then they, they released a fixed version of the puzzle, which didn't need that kit and was fully functional from the get-go. So just make sure, if you buy from any reputable seller, they should only have stock of the newest version anyway. But if you're buying on eBay or something, just, just double-check. Make sure that they have the latest version and not the internally bandaged one. But yeah, um, this is a great little puzzle, and it's definitely going to be challenging. I've heard that it's um, surprisingly challenging, given the size and relatively small number of pieces. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it is a little bit loose, but I don't feel like it's going to pop. At least I, I hope not. So I may adjust the tensions. You can see that it does bend open quite a bit there, but 
It still feels solid, I have to say. I don't think it's going to be a big problem. Um, so yeah, the brick cuboids, uh, my understanding is that they're a big jump up in difficulty from the floppies and the dominoes and whatever else, because you have to com combine a couple of different strategies. So my understanding, if, if my intuition is correct, in other words. I think one way to solve this may be to, once it's shape-shifted, um, try and reduce it to essentially a 2x2x3, two by two by possibly. And I, uh, I'm i trying to remember the videos I've watched before on brick cuboids, but I think the idea is you reduce it to a domino cuboid and then use domino strategies to solve it, um, which is which is interesting. So I'm looking forward to this. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely needs to do this one first before I attack the 3x3x5, three by three by or 3x4x5, by by sorry. This one, of course, is in the same category of brick cuboids, but I've heard it's a huge jump up in difficulty from the 2x3x4. Three three so definitely want to have a good understanding of that puzzle before moving on to this one. Um, again, the turning quality is great. It's actually better than the 2x3x4. Three three um, this puzzle's mechanism was designed by Tom van der Zanden. You can see his sticker there, along with MF8's. Um, I have to say, I'm really pleased with both these puzzles. MF8 is not known... In my experience, we're having great turning puzzles or great quality in general, and they often have high prices as well. But these were priced very affordably. They move great. They look great. They feel great. I, I really have no complaints. Uh, these are probably going to be among the most pleasant puzzles to use out of all the ones I've shown you, despite the complexity of the mechanism. So I'm thrilled with these. I can recommend them unreservedly. Look how smooth. All the layers are equally smooth. No catching at all. Just beautiful. That's the way a puzzle should be. And when I shape shift it, it's the same. Look how smooth that is. Fabulous. So I can completely without reservation recommend the both the bricks from MF8, the 2x3x4, and the 3x4x5. If you have any interest in these, buy them. I would say probably you want to have some background in stuff like the basic dominoes and towers and things before you move on to something like this. Uh, because you will need to know how to solve domino type cuboids and you know the typical end by end strategies um, and there may be some I think there's some new parodies as well in the bricks I'm not sure um, but yeah this is a great little puzzle it looks really cool as well the shape uh, yeah so this is 3 by 4 by 5 I've I heard rumors in the past that they were going to do uh, 4 by 5 by 6 um, I saw some posts going back a few years on the Twisty Puzzles forum where, the, where people were talking about these rumors. And, but it hasn't materialized. I hope that they do consider coming back to that idea at MF8 because um, this is a great puzzle. I think that Tom van der Zanden also made uh, the, the 4x5x6 mechanism, so I'm sure it would be just as high quality as this one and suitable for mass production. Maybe it'll come out. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, maybe... If you're really motivated, send a, an email to MF8's shop and say, please make the 4x5x6, and maybe they will. Um, higher order puzzles are always fun, and these cuboids are really fun, so that'd be great to see. Anyway, so that is my new collection of cuboids. I hope that was useful for some of you who may be thinking to expand your, your puzzle collection in this direction as well. Basically, to kind of recap, um, the 2x2x4, two by two by get the Rubik's. It's nicer than the Wit Eden, and the tires are tiles are really nice. Um, it's a little bit catchy, but it's it's better than the Wit Eden. For the three by three by ends, three by three by four, five, and six, uh, I only have the Wit Eden, so I can't talk about any other brands. I don't know that there are any besides a couple from Calvin's, uh, but if they're from Calvin's, they'll be much more expensive than they need to be. So I would get the Wit Edens because these are these are perfectly fine puzzles. Um, the stickers are you know not awe-inspiring or anything, but, uh, you know, they, they're functional. And just be prepared for a bit of catchiness, but nothing that's going to irritate you unduly, I would say. Um, so 3 by 3 by ends go for Wit Eden. For the 4 by 4 by ends these guys from IE are both nice puzzles. Um, the 4 by 4 by 3 in particular is really pleasant to solve on. There, there is catchiness, which gets in the way here and there. But in general, it feels good and is fun to solve. The 4x4x5, uh, I haven't done yet, but I've played around with it a lot, um, trying to understand it before I fully scramble it. And as you can see from my demo before, it's more catchy than the 4x4x3, but still solvable. I think it's not going to be a super confidence-inspiring 
when solving on it, but it should be uh, perfectly fine to solve uh, now and again. Then we've got the 4x4x6 from Calvin's. This is a really good moving puzzle. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to solve, but you really need to decide for yourself about the price. Um, unfortunately, you know, because of the, the sort of slightly low quality feel of the material and the, the poor stickering job, uh, to me it feels subpar for the price that they demand. Um, and, I, I, you know, I don't enjoy saying that. I, I like having puzzles that I can just feel great about purchasing and recommend to you, but... You know, if you have money to spare and you really want a 4x4x6, four four this is your only option anyway, unfortunately. But if you're on the fence or if there are other puzzles on your wish list, uh, maybe consider those if my reports about the, the quality um, concern you at all. But, you know, if $38 doesn't, doesn't mean much to you and, and you just want to get this size and dimension of cuboid, then, you know, I can tell you as a puzzle, it's going to be fun. You will enjoy it. But just be aware that you may want to get aftermarket stickers and, you know, do a little bit of work on it to make it, uh, you know, look and feel the way you might like it to. So it's a kind of half recommendation, I guess. Um, you know, solving experience is important and it, and it will be good. But, you know, things also need to be good value um, and made well. And, and it just, you know, it moves well, but aesthetics are part of this experience, too. We're talking about physical objects. And people like collecting these, so they, sh they should, to my mind, be treated with a bit more care than Calvin's has shown with this one. And then we have the Notorious, already, 5x5x4, which you should never buy under any circumstances. Don't even think about it. Um, you may, maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe there's, you know, a lottery happening here of, of sorts, and if you, you could get lucky and get one that turns like a puzzle should. But this is this is terrible. Don't buy it. It's overpriced, and it doesn't work. Um, it may work after a lot of effort on my part, but I shouldn't have to do that, frankly. Um, so this is this is the biggest disappointment that I've had in any of my puzzle purchases so far. Very, very disappointed by this. Don't buy it. Um, finally, the bricks from MF8. Buy both of these. These are great. They move great. They look great. They feel great. Uh, and the price is very good. $8 for this from Z-Cube. This was like 11 or 12. I mean, bargainous. Absolutely bargainous. And that's not a word I often use. I mean, first of all, it's not a real word. But but also, MF8 typically doesn't offer bargains. But these are really, really affordable and very attractive and very smooth moving puzzles. So these are great cubes. Buy them. Buy them, love them, have a good time. Um, so that's it for me. Let me know what you think in the comments. If I was very unlucky with the 5 by 5 by 4 um, let me know if you have one and you found a way to make it not horrendous and unusable. Please, please let me know because I really want to solve that puzzle. I love it as a concept, as a product. It's terrible. So I'd love any tips that you have. Um, and finally, if you have any experience with iCuboids and have some to recommend, or if you have any general cuboids in other categories that are mass produced that you would recommend, please let me know. Um, from my side, please look forward to my upcoming video on the Ultimate Shapeshifter Cuboid, which is coming to me from America. It's in the post. I have no idea how long it'll take to get here. It's around the Christmas period now, so it might be a bit slow, but as soon as it arrives, I will make a video uh, showing it off. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that as well. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. I hope you're getting ready to have a nice winter break and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.